As the reds switch off, the fallows switch on. <laughs> Paul is hunting the Hungarian rut for stags, bucks and boar. Lek left, lek right, then lek again. Black grouse make like Mick Jagger and David Bowie and are dancing in the streets. Would you be a rat or a squirrel in my back garden? Not when you go near the bird table of doom. We have news, we have Bargain Hunter, we have hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Hungary is famous for its impressive red deer and we've planned this trip to witness them at their most fervent, their most aggressive, the red rut. Paul's friend Jeremy arranged the trip. He leases the hunting across this stunning landscape. It's all on one large mixed farm with accommodation on site for wing shooting as well as stalking. Everything is evolved around hunting. It's farm for hunting, it's forestry is all done for hunting. There's a real great structure in what they're taking out, what's coming on, what's growing on. So yeah, it's a um, really well managed place, really impressed. Jeremy tells us the rut has been going full throttle, until now that is. A sudden rise in temperature switches the reds off. The fallow are on. Even Childerly <laughs> can't fight nature. It's going to work, I tell you. Before we know it, we're on a high seat with plenty of layers to ensure we don't lose focus. There's nothing worse than your mind constantly reminding you of how blooming cold your feet are, taking your eye off the ball. However, Thermal is a brilliant boredom basher and chill repellent. Thermal spotters are legal in Hungary, as is bow hunting. However, confession time, a moderator is not. We were assured they were, but we didn't double check and we didn't get pulled up by airport security or indeed any security. We hope by making an example of ourselves, others may be more careful, especially of their ears. Seeing nothing suitable, Paul goes after boar on foot, something we've already shown in a previous film. Here's a taster. Needless to say, he loved it. Good? It's brilliant. I loved it every second. We could have shot down further, but I just wanted to get in closer and get the, get the buzz from it. The following morning, it's our first real sense of the estate's topography. It's a chilly start, but you know that within an hour you'll be overheating in the Hungarian sunshine. Within 15 minutes they spot deer. Paul gets the thumbs up. A beautiful stag presents a shot. But Paul chooses not to shoot. Put simply, we haven't earned it. What does that really mean? We saw a shootable stag yeah. this morning. Yeah. But we didn't feel we'd earned it, did we? It's all about the hunt, basically, and the right one to take out. Um, he was happy to take it out. He preferred, he would preferred it to, to, to grow on a couple more, three or four more years. Um, so, yeah. I've shot enough things, I don't need to shoot everything, so, you know, 
Let's go and find one that he wants to take out the out the stock. But I feel the same too. It's really weird. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's Maybe we've done so much of it, we appreciate the everything around it. And it's not just about the animals, it's about seeing these old guys, seeing their old pair of binoculars, seeing what coat they're wearing, I'm seeing a vehicle, seeing you know what logs they're using on the fire. I'm thinking, oh, well, I might use that in the shoot lodge. Yeah, all those things. You, you go to these different places. Um, and that's where the, the thing with, with trophies and antlers, for me, it's a memorabilia when you take a set of antlers back of the, of the hunt, of the area you went to. And it, it just brings back memories of, of where you've been and where you hunted. Um, so, yeah. Far more complicated than just a, a piece of an animal, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's, it's far more, you know, trophy. If I want a trophy, I'll go kickboxing and win one, well, hopefully. Um, you know, it's, for me, it's not really a trophy. It's memorabilia. Um, so yeah, so it's not how big it is. If you get a big one, a hey, bonus. But you know, um, we bought um, porcupine quills back. From yes, Africa, didn't we? that was my trophy. That was my best trophy, I think. Um, yeah, porcupine quills, which you stabbed yourself with. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. <laughs> Put it in my bag. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Booby trap. <laughs> It reminds me a little bit like an English estate. There's no fences. The only fence is an electric fence to keep the deer out there and the pigs out of the maze. So it's great. It's like it's a properly managed place where, you know, they obviously work the all the side the population of deer on the board to make sure, you know, they've got a good population where every year is hunting. So very impressed, really, very, very lovely place, well managed place. So yeah. Oh, he's keen to go with that guy. Our stalk continues and we soak in the surrounding countryside. A group of deer graze at the end of a strip of pasture. There's a single stag, but not for us. As the morning heat rises, we call it. After a break, we'll be hunting fallow. Before we head to the forest, following the sound of grunting, Paul explains his bullet choice for big Hungarian game. Yeah, the Sacco Finlight 2 in the 6.5 Creek Moor. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. Oh, sorry, sorry. The, 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 the most popular but trendy round on the market. Um, yeah, I'd say I've been using it because I want to get more experience with it and and learn the calibre really um, and learn the, like, the trajectory of it but yeah, everything I'm shooting so far has been been brilliant. And as far as going from roe to fallow to possibly red stag I mean, yep. we're talking about, and boar of course yeah so as far as bullet what the hell do you do what's the difference? Well uh, to be honest with you I've been a lot of the time I've been using one, 120 uh, grain bullets um, but for out here for the bigger stuff, I've gone to like the maximum, the uh, 156 grain. Um, it's a soft nose bullet, um, deer head. I find it's a very stable bullet. It's a very long, actually got one in my hand. It's actually a very long um, bullet head, um, but I find it very stable, very stable in the wind. Um, this, is the, this is the same bullet when we were in um, Eastern Cape last year um, on the Kudu. So if it's, if it's taken down African game, you know, I'm not being funny, red stags, it shouldn't be a problem with. Um, but we, we're yet to see, but uh, it works, works well on everything I used it on so far, so yeah. So hopefully we can get to give it a try over the next uh, 24 hours before we whoosh, back to England. Stalking a big European forest that you know is bursting with game is exciting, especially when you can hear it. We head in the general direction of what must be a known rutting stand. The approach is slow and steady. Through the trees we see glimpses of young bucks. Even though it sounds as if there's another party in the next valley, we stay put. Our guide wants us to play the waiting game. The excitement of the last 24 hours is taking its toll and everyone enjoys a power nap. As long as no one snores, the wildlife comes to you and we sit and appreciate.
The following morning in its last chance saloon, an establishment where they definitely know our name. Right down to the last moment again. We know there will be deer, it's just whether it's the right one. Opportunities come and then go. Then there's a single stag grazing a couple of hundred metres below us. Paul gets on the sticks. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Elation, hey? Well ah, the pressure. No pressure. Nice shot off the sticks at the end, which is nice. Same old, same old, isn't it? Same old, <laughs> right to the last moment. Yeah, because it's nice shot. 216 was on my rangefinders. Off the sticks, perfect. Craig Moore done the job. Didn't know we were here today. No, I no, didn't know he was here. Yeah. And uh, yeah, a bit of excitement on this one. Great. Yeah, great. The uh, he's actually perfect on it. Perfect broadside. Didn't know we were here. And um, yeah, perfect stag. And the Craig Moore did the job. Considering I had a little bit of doubt from a few people, saying it wouldn't be man enough. Quite a few people said really? it. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people said, "Oh, it's a bit small, isn't it, for red stags?" Nice. Nah. You can take down the African kudu. I'm sure it can do a red stag. So no, really pleased with that. Really chuffed. Perfect. Well done, David. Hope you got it on camera. I <laughs> do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd like to build up to that. Yeah. You shot many reds? Yeah. I shot a few, um, but uh, I never shot a proper, proper Scottish red stag. And that's the first Hungarian stag, so all good. Yeah, I, shot, I haven't shot a lot of experience with red, to be fair. But uh, yes, very happy. Very, very happy. Strong, aren't they? Strong and big. Pardon? No, not too bad really. Not too bad at all. No. A few sidewinders, a few ticks. I'm shooting downhill and the bullet hasn't dropped. Actually, it's not far off smack on where I put it. I put it about here. So I dropped a couple of inches. Um, I expected to drop a little bit more than that. Two, two sixteen. It was on my rangefinders. So, yeah, and done the job. Thirty, forty meter dash, and done. Our whirlwind trip to Hungary has been yeah. a great success, with shooting opportunities morning, noon, and night. And as Paul says, be it antlers, porcupine quills, or falling asleep in a Hungarian forest. They all play their part in making the hunting experience live on. Thank you, Paul and Jeremy. And uh, we apologise once again for the muddle over the moderator, but it does show what a disaster EU moderator laws are at the moment. Some countries allow them, some don't. We once got one passed uh, in Slovenia because it was identified as 
an experimental gun accessory, not as a moderator at all. And of course, European noise in the workplace regulations mean that EU countries have to allow moderators or they, the governments, are breaking the law. So what do you do? Anyway, for another fine mess, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Moorland, managed by Bradford Council, has been mown in the middle of the bird nesting season. The incident was filmed on Belden Moor, north of Bradford. Shooting organisations are outraged. Mowing moors when many red-listed birds could be nesting is a travesty, says the Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust. Bradford Council said it is investigating the incident, which may have been authorised by the council or may have been an unauthorised third party, possibly mowing gallops into the moor for training horses. Gamekeepers have been hailed for stopping a potentially devastating wildfire in Stirlingshire. The blaze was threatening nesting habitats of wading birds near Bannockburn. Six gamekeepers from Tayside and Central Scotland Moorland Group were on the scene with leaf blowers. Meanwhile, Peak District Moorland Group has released video of helicopters fighting fires. The clip is the pilot's eye view of the blaze. The helicopters carry 1,500 litres of water during each run, and more than 100 buckets are dropped in a day. Some of these fires, including a forest fire in Ireland that caused 500,000 euros of damage, are being started deliberately. Some, of course, by accident. Police are warning against rural vigil antis who are taking the law into their own hands during the lockdown. Villagers have blocked roads, confronted cyclists and put up signs telling people to stay away. The National Rural Crime Network has received reports of small-scale vigilantism from locals angry at people driving in the countryside for walks or bike rides. Threatening notes have reportedly been left on cars belonging to people from outside the area. Basque has welcomed a reversal of the Scottish Government's funding plan for field sports businesses. Cabinet Secretary for the Rural Economy and Tourism, Fergus Ewing, says financial provisions would be made to the businesses during the coronavirus pandemic. This comes after Bass criticised the Scottish Government for its initial lack of support. Ewing said sporting businesses had been inadvertently excluded. Shooting and fishing organisations are working hard on getting Brits back out shooting and fishing. Basque chief Ian Bell wrote to the government pleading to allow deer stalking and pigeon shooting to join bicycling, the Prime Minister's favourite hobby. This video from the Angling Trust is its pitch to government to allow fishers back onto UK waters. An angler from Wolverhampton has been fined for going on a fishing trip during the lockdown. GWCT has lashed out at DEFRA, accusing it of failing to protect curlews. Chris Packham's Wild Justice Group forced DEFRA to prevent the control of carrion crows on protected sites such as SPAs, allowing the birds to prey on curly chicks, says the shooting organisation. According to the British Trust for Ornithology, the curlew is the UK's most pressing bird conservation priority, while the carrion crow has increased consistently since the 1960s. The GWCT quoted a review of scientific studies across Europe, which found that breeding success was so low, more than 70% of nests between 1996 and 2006 were not able to hatch a single chick. Keep calm and carry on making guns. That's the ethos at John Rigby & Co. Rifle makers have been locked down in their workshop and some of the gunsmiths have been kept away from their families for five weeks in order to meet a backlog of orders. Managing Director Mark Newton says the London firm has two or three years worth of orders and April has already been one of the best months on record. He added that it was a bit of a gamble to cut off workers from their families early on but it seems to have paid off. You know, we, we felt that it was the right decision to take at the time, and it's you know, it's proved to be uh, you know very beneficial for, for the company and also for the guys next door. You know, they absolutely live, breathe, and sleep, and everything else. Rigby's Browning and Winchester have come up with a plan to help gun shops. With gun shops closed all over the world, it's set up your local gun shop needs you. UK. If you're thinking of a new gun, you can go there and make a promise to buy a Browning or Winchester from your local dealer. Once you've filled in the short form and your promise has been sent to the gun dealer, the firm will send you a gift pack to your home. Shooters have been raising yet more money for health charities. 
The Shooting Diary drew its first raffle, which raised £3,585. Its second raffle is already over £4,000. Thanks to Nicola and Paul Nally for sending this in. A clay shooter needs your help. Sarah Gray, former GB Skeet Team member shown here on the left, winning medals with Amber Hill and Delina Allen, has cancer. She needs to get to America for potential life-saving treatment. They have the money and doctors in San Francisco have accepted her onto their programme. They just need access to the USA. And this is where Sarah needs your help lobbying both the UK and US government. Please make her a cause. Find out more in the link in the description below. There's been a spate of swans shot in Berkshire. This one recovered after being taken to a local swan sanctuary. The local newspaper suggests it was shot by an air gun. However, the x-ray shows what looks like a catapult ball lodged in the bird. Likely to be shot on their nests, another was found shot a week ago. Thanks to Nick Brown for the story. Hunters in New Zealand have been told they can now hunt on private land. The government's decided to relax strict lockdown measures and the Sport and Recreation Minister Grant Robertson says hunting is a critical source of food for some. He adds there needs to be limits to mitigate risk during the coronavirus pandemic. Hunting on public conservation land will still not be allowed, thanks to Richard Walton for the story. Hunting and angling have been declared as essential services in certain parts of Canada. British Columbia added the activities to its list of essential services after three weeks of discussions between the BC Wildlife Federation and government departments. The Federation asks hunters and anglers to make sure they follow the rules. In a statement, BCWF says it will continue to advocate on behalf of hikers, hunters and anglers. It added people should be allowed to get outside safely and enjoy public spaces, especially parks. A four-year-old boy has been eaten alive by a boar in India. The youngster left his home in Hyderabad to play in a nearby area when a herd of wild pigs saw him and dragged him away, according to the Daily Mail. The police were called after his body was found. Neighbours had made several complaints about the boar, but local authorities had not done anything to remove them from the area. And finally, it's bad luck to be a black cat in Vietnam. According to animal rights activists, the animals are being killed and eaten amid rumours their ground up bodies can treat the coronavirus. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. And there is more news on our website. Go and have a look at the link in the description below. It's fchannel slash news. Now the devil makes work for idle hands and that's what happened when production editor Aaron found this photograph of David striking a pose on the green carpet of the Game Fair Theatre back in happier times. Hmm. We've come out this morning just into this yard. A bit of a Saturday pest control mission. Um, we came in here, there was probably a hundred or more going into a meal shed. They've been making a nuisance of themselves. They often pick holes in silage covers, they eat a lot of grain and cattle feed, and they can contaminate food and water supplies with their droppings. When they come across the yard, usually a little bit of a curl on them, and going very, very slowly. We haven't, um, haven't put too much effort into building the hide or anything. Everyone is like a, it's like a trophy. <laughs> Brilliant morning sport. Lovely little board, but dirty fickers all the same. Thank you, Aaron. And quite a lot of that came from Field Sports Ireland out this week, and you can watch that by clicking on the link in the description below. Now, we once described the Black Cock Lek as worthy of the Amazon rainforest floor. Well, it's taking place right now, and thanks to reduced levels of traffic during lockdown, it's taking place on roads. News editor Ben O'Rourke has been to Yorkshire to find out. The Yorkshire Dales is the scene this early morning for one of the British Isles' great wildlife spectacles, the Black Grouse Lek, a turf war that decides which black cocks get the grey hens. And I'm with a grouse shooter who champions this bird. Can you, can you hear him lacking in there? Yeah, can you hear something? Yeah, that, that's a black grouse. 
just playing through a grey hen. Finally it happens. Three birds facing off on tarmac. Okay, we've crept up behind the wall and the lek is just over the wall here. And this is what it's all about. Usually leks are on heather heavy moors, but this one in 2020 is different. It's in the middle of a road. Well, we've got some black grouse just over the rise and they're lekking, which is dis males together displaying and they're on the road because the road is so quiet because of coronavirus that it's a really nice flat area for them to, for, for them to display on. And so that's what they're doing. Yeah, black grouse are funny birds. The grey hens, the females, will disperse a long way looking for males, but the males don't go very far. So you can have areas of good population growth, but they don't spread out. When a small number were let out in the south, in this area, they didn't just sort of lek immediately. At, at low densities, they flew a long way looking for females. But as the density rises, suddenly they're starting to form these clusters and leks, and the females are coming to those leks. And this is, I, I thought it was going to happen this year, and it has. And we have our first lek this year. So they bred on here, but the original males, to get it going, came from the Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust, uh, where they relocated black grouse from the north, from the north Pennines into the southern dales to uh, re-establish the population of black grouse on site. Unlike anti-grouse shooting campaigners, when it comes to the hard graft of conservation work, James is more action than talk. He's putting in the hours to improve the bird's conservation status. The grouse relocation programme is just part of a larger effort by James to rejuvenate the moors. It's all about habitat. Uh, and last year, on the uh, thousand metres of road that way, we had three broods. One had a two, one had an eight, and one had a nine. So there is absolutely no problems with them breeding with good numbers if the habitat's right. Looking at this uh, piece of bank here, I can see that we've got the primroses, we've got meadow vetchling coming there, or maybe horseshoe vetch, we've got uh, a little patient tiller, we've got, I think it is, uh, we've got meadow sweet, uh, we've got plantains, so we've got a wide range of flowering plants here, and they will, they will support the insects that the birds, that the, uh, the chicks need. But we only get this through farming it in the proper way. And the way we farm it is with cattle, a mix of cattle and sheep in the right proportions. A sheep has a very similar diet to a game bird in that they want a small amount of the very best stuff. Cattle are different in, in that they're a volume feeder. So they take, they're not too worried. They've got a very big mouth, so they can't pick very much anyway. So they can get away with a lot of poor quality forage. Uh, uh, and what that means is that every plant gets a go. He's correcting decades old bad government policy that led to flooding in places like York. If a river up here is pushing the water off as quickly as possible, York floods. We, we are trying to do some work to improve it and to hold the water up. Uh, after the war, there was a big push uh, to increase food production. As part of that, the government encouraged farmers to drain the moors with moorland grips. Uh, this, this certainly got rid of the water a lot quicker, uh, but it did lots of damage to the river. Top of the list is filling in grips. James is passionate about moor management, understanding completely that whatever happens on his land affects everyone downstream. His work, helped this year by the coronavirus lockdown, is already helping black grouse. You can read more about James and his moorland management in the GWCT's publication, Moorland Conservationists. Click on the link in the description to download it. Thank you, Ben, for filming that. And some of that material may find its way onto BBC Countryfile this week, so keep an eye out if they don't. Credit us, you'll know where it came from. Paid for by the Field Sports Nation, that's you. Now let's look at what gun shops are up to. It's Bargain Hunter. In Bargain Hunter this week, Blaser is doing a remarkable deal through its dealers who are trading online. Shops including Braces of Bristol, Swinningtons in Yorkshire, Clooney in Fife, Coombe Farm Sporting in Somerset and Mulliners in Dorset. Normal retail price for this package is £330. You can order it through your Blaser dealer and get it dispatched direct from the Blaser warehouse for £180. 
Emmett and Stone's online shop is open. It has a huge 50% off all its clothing and footwear. Ridgeline is giving 15% off goods in its web store when you quote FSTV15. That's FSTV15. Available for one week only from today, the 29th of April 2020, for orders more than £50. It includes international orders. And Milton Keynes-based gun shop R&K Stockcraft has a sale on clothing at the moment on its website. Plus, you can enter a competition to win a 1,000 cartridges. For links to all of these deals, offers and draws, visit fchannel slash bargainhunter. And that link's in the description below. There you go. Please support them. Now it's lockdown fun with a bird table. Out in my back garden, I have been feeding lots of lovely songbirds, but my bird table has attracted rats and squirrels, which sets the stage for this. Everyone likes to see pretty birdies, and that's why so many of us have bird tables. 2020 has been a good year to enjoy watching them feed. Mixed seed and fat balls for the tits, Niger seed for the finches and some really terrible table manners. Well, I don't mind that because the chickens benefit and so do other small birds and I'm even fond of this pair of stock doves that are nesting in the garden. But the other beneficiaries are these fellows, vermin. Now, if you have small rats coming out in the daytime, you will know there's a big mama coming out at night. And sure enough, that's what the trail cam confirms. To start with, I get out the air gun, a BSA Scorpion, and I set about zeroing it at 20 feet. Then I begin what turns out to be a disastrous attempt to shoot the daytime rats. What's going wrong? The PCP is running out of air. I have a pump, but I don't have a filling adapter, and the gun shop where I usually fill it is closed due to coronavirus lockdown. So, what to do? It's time to bring out the big guns. I'm shooting from an upstairs window, straight down onto a lawn 20 feet away. Time for the 2 2 rimfire with iron sights to shine. I haven't shot like this since school cadets, and it really works. Funny thing feeding birds, the aunties say don't shoot crows, rooks, jackdaws, jays, magpies because it has no effects on songbird populations, but they say do feed the songbirds. I think they have it the wrong way up. This is my bird table. I choose songbirds. I have another problem. Squirrels. They can get up onto the bird table itself. They are wary. This one heard the click of me opening the upstairs window, and it skedaddled. This one was not so clever. That splosh of water comes from, unfortunately, the bird's drinker, which I also destroyed with that shot. But it was worth it. There remains the problem of the big mama. She can get past the plastic bottle that stops the little ones getting up to the bird feeder. It's time for a stakeout. This is turning from pest control into a trophy hunt. I want that rat. And one evening, I get my chance. OK, I didn't mount her head on the wall, but I thought about it. And just when I was feeling glorious for having got her, Squirrel! That was fun. Now, from my back garden to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Simon Smith edited this for his Simon 6PC channel. It's crow and magpie shooting using a Rapid 7 FAC airgun. The Welsh Field Sports Channel has brought out this 2217 HMR comparison. It's a rimfire showdown. Julian Morris has also brought out a pigeon shooting film. Mooch's Way brings out a video calling on ramblers to stick to footpaths, as he is doing on a shooting estate. The shoot he is on is one that has mothballed for the year. Thanks to Lodewijk van Hogendorp for this hunting YouTube channel from the Netherlands. It's Holton Media and this film is about goose shooting. 
Lockdown doesn't stop Yacht Faber in Germany from putting up his usual monthly nature film. This one's mainly about Roe. From France, Avini Expeditions is out with one of his great hunting adventures. This one is wild boar in Tajikistan. Hunting with stew is pig hunting too, but this time in lockdown in Australia. And finally, Glenn Faller recommends this film, 50 Years of Field and Game Australia. It's a celebratory DVD from 12 years ago, now on YouTube, where it should be. That's it for this week. I've put all these films into a link in the description or you can click on the screen for that. If you have a film for hunting YouTube you'd like to send in, please email me, charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that's it for this week. If you haven't done so, please whiz over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click to like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter and you can subscribe to us on YouTube. And of course, best of all, you can pop your email address into our register page and we'll contact you by email about this show, Field Sports Britain. It's at 7 p.m. UK time. Plus, you can back us. Go to the Field Sports Nation page on the website to find out how to do that. I'll see you next week. Still no hunting, no shooting, no fishing, but there will be a Field Sports Britain next Wednesday. See you then. Yeah.